name's Richard from MrEarlyYears.com and I'm here to give you my top five tips for developing gross and fine motor skills in the early years. Fine motor control begins in the arm, the shoulder, upper arm, forearm, before moving to the wrist and hand and fingers. Fine motor skills are essential for children's writing and for carrying out everyday tasks such as putting on shoes, feeding, brushing teeth and fastening zips on coats. It's important to know that children continuously develop their fine motor skills right up until about the age of eight years old. So there's a very strong argument there for continuous provision continuing into key stage one, especially for finger gym. Okay, so here are a collection of ideas along with my top five tips. Number one, the arm. Draw and paint on an easel using the whole arm. Go digging, raking and shoveling in the sand. Push and, pull, push and pull the wheelbarrows around the garden. Bounce and throw balls or bean bags. But one of my favourites is the commando crawl. Lay a blanket, the heavier the better, down on the ground outside. Choose a designated starting position and challenge your child to crawl under the blanket whilst keeping the body as flat as possible. This will encourage arm movements like this. Number two, the wrist. Crumple paper with your hand. Use large tweezers to pick up marbles, kidney beans or pom-poms. Tear tissue paper into small strips, then scrunch into small balls and collage a large picture. But one of my favorite activities is squeezing sponges and wringing cloths. After your child has cleaned the table using whole arm movements, they can squeeze the water out of a sponge or wring the water from a cloth. You could also encourage your child to try this activity using their non-dominant hand. Ask them, how did it feel? Did it feel any different? Was it, was it a challenge? Not only does this exercise benefit the arm, wrist and hand, but you get a nice clean table at the end. Winner. Number three, the fingers. Quite often, when thinking of fine motor development, practitioners sometimes jump straight into this part, but I think it's essential we remember that arm, wrist and hand come first. Use pegs for the children to peg their own work or pictures onto the line. Pick up small items like raisins or rice with tweezers. Thread beads and sharpen pencils, but one of my favorite activities is to draw with small pieces of chalk. When I say small, I mean the kind of chalk you would normally throw away. But don't. This is the best time to use chalk as real strength and coordination are required. And the process requires the use of the fingertips rather than the whole hand grasp. Number four, in hand manipulation. Pick up paper clips, marbles, coins, pegs, and other small objects in one hand. And how many can you pick up before you drop one? Take a key ring with several keys on it. Shift them around the ring to find the one you require, all using one hand. But my favorite is finger football. Take a large sheet of paper, draw a football pitch on it, and mark out two goals. Scrunch up a small piece of paper to make the ball. To play the game, each child uses their index finger and middle finger to walk around the pitch. Then they kick the ball by flicking their middle finger from their thumb. Thus, how many goals can you score? Number five, sell your provision to the children. Model, show how much fun it is. Talk to yourself as you problem solve and create. Model the thought process. Leave the provision out for an extended period of time, only tweaking its appearance or attractiveness. For example, you could have Play-Doh out every day, but on day two, you would have red Play-Doh. Day three, the Play-Doh could be scented with chocolate, citrus, or coffee. Day four, take the tools away and add different tools. Day five, add glitter. 
and other uh, craft resources such as matchsticks, feathers or pom-poms etc. Don't forget at the end of the day to get the children to clean those tables using those whole arm movements. Finally, make sure you know your children. Share your observations with parents and other PAC practitioners. Maybe you have a PE teacher. Speak to the PE teacher. If a child needs support with gross motor skills, then the fine motor challenges may be too much for them. For more tips, resources and ideas to help you in your early years practice, have a look at my website, mrearlyears.com or follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you.